These are the video notes for section 6.1, factoring out a GCF, which will be followed by the notes for section 6.1, factor by grouping. We are going to factor out a GCF from a binomial and trinomial, so we have to go over what uh, these terms are. In order to go over what a binomial and trinomial is, you need to know what a monomial is. A monomial is numbers or a term separated by multiplication. So for example, 3 is considered a monomial, 3x is considered a monomial, and 5x squared, y squared is also considered a monomial. For these two terms that we have here, you know that the operation separating the 3 and the x is multiplication, as well as the operation separating the 5x squared and y squared. So even though this term right here has three parts to it, it's still considered a monomial because all of the three parts are separated by multiplication. So now a binomial is two monomials separated by addition or subtraction. So examples of binomials are x squared plus 3, x squared y minus 3a cubed. And then a trinomial are three monomials separated by addition or subtraction. So I have some examples of that here. x squared plus 2 plus 3x cubed. 4x cubed plus 3x plus a are two examples of trinomials. Before we factor out a GCF from a binomial or trinomial, I'm going to show you what it looks like going the other way around, which you are used to. For example, if you were asked to simplify this expression 2 times the quantity x plus 2, you would know to use the distributive property to distribute the 2 to the x to get 2x, and then 2 to the positive 2 to get plus 4. And then we've completed the distribution process and we get 2x plus 4. Going from the original expression to 2x plus 4 is called simplifying. And going the other way around is called factoring, which is what we're going to do today. So in our first example, we're going to have 2x plus 4. I'm going to show you how do we end up with 2, quanti two times the quantity x plus 2. These are the steps to factor out a GCF. The first step is to factor the GCF between all terms first, followed by parentheses. The second is to divide the GCF into each part of the polynomial. So in our first example, we're going to factor the GCF out of 2x plus 4. We already know that our answer is going to look like this, so that is why we are going to put the GCF first um, between the two terms. For this binomial, we have 2x and 4. The GCF between 2x and 4 from our previous lesson would be 2. And then I'm going to set up my parentheses. Now I'm going to show you how to get the x plus 2 that's supposed to be inside. Since there are two parts to this polynomial, I'm going to write each part separately like this. Now our last step says divide the GCF into each part of the polynomial. So our GCF was 2, so we're going to divide each of these parts by 2. 2x divided by 2 is x, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So what goes in the parentheses is your x and the 2, followed also by the sign that is there, a plus sign. So if there's a minus sign here, we would write x minus 2. Whenever you're factoring out a GCF, you can always check your answer by distribution, which is simplifying going backwards. So 2 times x would be 2x, and 2 times 2 would be 4. So we're going to factor out the GCF from 5y plus 25. The GCF between these two parts is 5. Then we're going to divide it into each of the parts that we have. We're left with y and 5. So set up my parentheses, and we have y plus 5. In our next example, 9z cubed plus 36z squared, the GCF between both of these parts is 9z squared. So I'm going to write both parts down, divided by the GCF. And then write what's left in the parentheses, z plus 4. A general rule that we have when you have a negative sign in front of any polynomial and you're factoring, we must factor out a negative as part of the GCF. So if I didn't have this negative sign, the GCF would have been 7a. But because there's a negative sign, I'm going to factor out negative 7a as part of my GCF. And what that does is it will affect the signs that you have. So I'm going to write each part down 
and divided by the GCF. For extra clarification, it would be a good idea to include the sign of the second term and then whatever outcome you get from here, you will put it inside the parentheses. So for the first one, you're going to end up with a squared. and the second one, you will get negative 2. So what's left in the parentheses is a squared minus 2. And again, to check this, you can distribute the negative 7a into the parentheses, and you will end up with negative 7a cubed plus 14a. In our next example, we have a trinomial. We're going to do it the same way we did with the binomial. We're going to factor out the GCF between all three parts. The GCF between all three parts is 3. Then we're going to divide 3 into all three parts. Um, you can also divide in your head. You don't need to write all the side work out. So 3 goes into 3y squared. You're left with y squared. 3 goes into 30y. You're left with 10y. And then 3 goes into 36 12 times. In this next example, we still have a binomial, but it looks a little strange because if you look at it, we have binomials in parentheses, but as a whole term, we have a binomial because we have two monomials separated by addition. So this is considered a binomial. Uh, the GCF between this is x plus 1, as we mentioned in our previous lesson. So x plus 1 comes out, and we're going to keep it in the parentheses because it's a binomial, whereas before, we wrote the GCF um, alone. And then we're going to divide x plus 1 into each of the parts. Recall that anything over itself is equal to 1. So we have 7x for the first part. Then we have 4. So what is left is 7x plus 4. And you can also see that when you factor out a GCF here, you can just simply write down what is left up on the board, ignoring the two binomials. That's where we got the 7x plus 4. These are the video notes for section 6.1, Factor by Grouping. We factor by grouping when you're factoring a polynomial with four terms in it. We have a pre-step that says do not combine your like terms as it may be very tempting to do so. Our first step is to group the first two terms and last two terms by underlining. The second step is to factor the GCF from both groupings separately. And the last step is to factor out the GCF. We're going to group the first two and the last two terms. The GCF is 3x. We are left with 4y plus 3. Now the second part, we're going to factor out a negative. If you recall, when you have a negative sign, in front of a binomial, you're going to factor it out as part of your GCF. So the GCF is negative 2, and we are left with 4y plus 3. Then we're going to factor out the GCF, 4y plus 3, and then 3x minus 2 is left. In our next example, we're going to group the first two and the last two terms. The GCF for the first two is 2x. What is left is 4x cubed plus 3. Then we're going to factor out a negative 7. What is left is 4x cubed plus 3. Then the GCF we're going to factor out is 4x cubed plus 3. And then what is left is 2x minus 7. In our next example, we're going to group the first two terms, the last two terms, the GCF for the first two terms is t squared. We are left with 7t minus 5. If you notice, we don't have a direct GCF in our next two groupings. So what we do is we factor out a positive 1, which keeps the problem the same for the second part. Now we're going to factor out the GCF, which is 7t minus 5. Then we are left with t squared plus 1. So for this particular example, when you have a grouping such as 17 minus 5 and there is no GCF other than 1, we always factor 1 as part of our GCF.